In this episode, we discuss the importance of light for miniature painting. What up, mini people? Everyone has got some kind of lighting when they paint miniatures, whether it's sitting outside using the sunlight, painting with one desk lamp or multiple, or painting with this weird thing. Everyone knows that in order to paint well, we need to be able to see what we're painting, but not everyone puts a lot of thought into their lamps, the fixtures and the light bulbs that go inside of them. So in this video, we're going to go over the characteristics that make a good light for miniature painting. First, we'll talk about the fixture. It's important that your choice of light can be high enough above so that you don't have to slouch. Slouching for a long period of time can introduce some pretty killer back problems. This can mean going out and buying a lamp with a longer reach, or simply placing your lamp higher up so you can paint comfortably. Additionally, you want to make sure you have enough coverage to light the entirety of your painting workstation. It's nice to not have to move around in order to be able to see all the parts of your miniature. This could mean getting additional fixtures or creating a cool light halo that wraps your entire surface in light. Finally, you want to make sure your fixture supports a decently high wattage that we can use some powerful bright bulbs. Now on to the more important portion of the light, the bulb itself. For the sake of simplicity, we'll be sticking to standard Edison E27 style screw-in light bulbs. There are three main types of lights you'll come across when you visit your local home center. Incandescent, CFL or compact fluorescent light, or LED. Incandescent lights are not suited for miniature painting. They give off way too much heat and provide too little output. Try to avoid these if possible. For our purposes, CFL and LED work pretty well, and I tend to prefer CFL because it's right in the middle where price meets performance. Now that we know the basic kinds of lights, let's discuss what characteristics you want to shoot for. The first one is decent light output. You want your lights to be as bright as possible within reason to suppress any shadows in your work area. Light output can oftentimes be measured in lumens or funny values like foot candles, but is most universally measured in equivalent incandescent wattage consumed. A lot of times you'll see CFL bulbs that are rated for 25 watts, but will also be rated at 100 watts equivalent incandescent. This simply means that if this CFL were an incandescent light, it would be as bright as a 100 watt incandescent. This universal wattage scale is a good way to compare different types of bulbs. Another important feature of light is color temperature. You want to shoot for daylight balanced bulbs. This ensures that our bulb doesn't impart any coldness or warmth onto our miniature. Light fixtures are measured in Kelvin, daylight being anywhere from 5000 to 5800 Kelvin, but lights can go anywhere from 2700K all the way up to 7000K, so be on the lookout for that. Finally, the last important characteristic to discuss is CRI, or Color Rendering Index. This is your light's ability to accurately render the color that you are seeing. Oftentimes, cheaper bulbs will have less phosphors, meaning they are unable to accurately portray all colors, and they often have nasty spikes in different hues, such as green and magenta. This effect can be seen most easily when we're taking pictures of our miniatures. Suffice to say that the higher the CRI value, the more accurate your light is. Now, CRI isn't in the whole picture to this story. There's also metamorism and monochromaticity, but let's not get too scientific. Get the best bulbs you can, and you'll be set for painting and photography. The economical painter among you is wondering if shelling out the cash for a high CRI bulb is worth it. Well, let's do a test to see. We'll take one picture with a low cost bargain brand light bulb and another with a high CRI light bulb and see if we can tell the difference. The one on the left, number one, is the one taken with the high CRI CFL bulb, and to me, the difference is as clear as day. The red is much more saturated, there is no green cast to the photo, and even the skin tones on the models look way more natural. Based on this comparison, you can decide for yourself if buying higher CRI bulbs is worth it for you. It certainly helps when photographing our miniatures. So now we know the main characteristics that make up a good light for miniature painting. A fairly inexpensive option is in the description below if you're curious how you can step up your lighting game and also a more expensive one. What kind of lighting situation are you guys in? Feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But speaking of you guys, let's look at the community highlight for this week. This week we have a Warjack Centurion from Nick Sherdnick from the game War Machine. Freaking look at this thing. It's absolutely beautiful. 
The blue is absolutely stunning. Thanks for the submission, Nick. If you want to see photos of your miniatures at the end of one of my videos, check out the description below. If you know someone who's trapped in a dingy basement huddling over a single 15 watt incandescent lamp, share this video with him or her and hopefully they'll see the light. But more importantly, as always, go paint some more minis. The amount of coats to make the effect go away entirely. Let's check out how various colors mix. Here we have three primary colors so that I'm not touching it while painting. And now we're on to the painting step. For my priming, I tend to use a mixture of aerosol based spray primers and also brush on primers. What kind of fixtures do you... Be set for photography and... Pretty poo poo. 